It's a great honor to contribute to this first virtual ISICAM meeting. In the next 12 minutes, I shall explore the role of biomarkers. These are my disclosures. They have not affected what I'm going to say. In principle, biomarkers are indicators of a biological state or a condition that can be measured and be monitored. With regards to acute kidney injury, our current biomarkers are creatinine and urine output. And we use them to make a diagnosis of acute kidney injury. But it's clear that creatinine and urine output are not renal specific. Creatinine is produced in skeletal muscle and it is dependent on muscle bulk as well as other factors, in particular liver function. And therefore it comes as no surprise that we've been looking for additional markers to describe acute kidney injury in more detail. We're looking for biomarkers which may diagnose acute kidney injury earlier or may tell us more about potential trajectories and outcomes. Indeed, in the last 10 years, many other factors have been, biomarkers have been identified. And these are molecules which stem from different parts of the nephron and indicate different processes as outlined here. All of them have a kinetic profile and all of them get released in response to a particular stimulus. And this is what makes them very exciting because depending on the origin of these biomarkers and the trigger, they can allow us to diagnose acute kidney injury potentially earlier than creatinine. They may give us more insight uh, into the underlying etiology and they may, depending on the nature, also give us more information about outcome and trajectories. And indeed, this is what we have seen in the last 10 years. There are biomarkers which clearly identify high-risk patients. As an example, I'd like to show the Prevaki study, which was conducted in a single center. And the team identified high-risk patients by measuring the urine four hours after cardiac surgery. Those with a positive biomarker were then randomized to a care bundle versus standard care. And this approach of identifying high-risk patients allowed the team to demonstrate that management according to a care bundle resulted in less acute kidney injury and importantly, less severe acute kidney injury. In this study, there were no other uh, differences in any other outcomes. The Big Pack trial followed a similar approach, but focused on patients undergoing major non-cardiac surgery. And again, high-risk patients were identified by testing the urine for a, positive, for a biomarker. Biomarker positive patients were then randomized to a bundle of care versus standard care. And in this trial, as before, the patients randomized to bundle uh, management had less acute kidney injury and less severe acute kidney injury. And in this trial, there was also a difference in healthcare costs. Biomarkers may also allow us to diagnose acute kidney injury earlier before serum creatinine rises or urine output falls. And this has been demonstrated in numerous studies with many different biomarkers. The results have been very variable and best results are usually seen in studies which uh, focused on patients with less comorbidities in particular children. Results were also better in studies where the time of the insult or the exposure was known, for instance, in patients post-cardiac surgery or post-coronary angiography. 
and results were best in combination with clinical parameters or in panels of biomarkers. As I've already alluded to, biomarkers have also been used to predict outcomes. Um, and interestingly, a recently identified biomarker is urinary DKK3, which is a biomarker uh, identified in patients post cardiac surgery, which allowed the prediction of AKI and subsequent kidney loss, kidney function loss even before the onset, even before the nephrotoxic insult. Other studies looked at uh, outcomes in the form of needing renal replacement therapy or death after an insult. And again, there are many studies in the literature. Michael Hauser and colleagues looked at NGAL as an additional biomarker combined with serum creatinine. And as you can clearly see here, in patients who were biomarker positive, NGAL positive, the outcome was always worse compared to patients who were only creatinine positive. Adding a biomarker to the existing panel of biomarkers, creatinine or urine output, adds additional information and provides additional granularity. In this study, Professor Ronko looked at the value of adding, nep uh, adding uh, cell cycle arrest markers to the existing panel of creatinine and urine output. And again, patients with acute kidney injury who were biomarker positive had a significantly higher risk of needing renal replacement therapy or dying compared to those who were biomarker negative. Again, confirming the value of biomarkers in predicting outcomes. Investigators of the FROG ICU study looked at the role of biomarkers in patients who left the intensive care unit. And as you can see here, they managed to be concluded that biomarkers measured at time of discharge from the intensive care unit were predictive of poor one-year outcomes. Again, highlighting the fact that serum creatinine at this time point is less uh, useful as it is not completely renal specific. And measuring additional biomarkers add to the prognostic information. Biomarkers may also help in predicting kidney recovery or non-recovery. And this was shown uh, in several studies where investigators used biomarkers to predict the need for renal replacement therapy. Professor Joannidis and colleagues performed a systematic review of all existing studies and evaluated 41 studies, which looked at 13 different biomarkers. As you can see, um, just looking at NGAL here in this graph, the performance of NGAL as a predictor for renal replacement therapy was very variable in these different studies. The same applied to cystatin C with different results depending on the patient population studied. And overall, the uh, investigators felt that biomarkers indeed showed reasonable prediction of renal replacement therapy, but at this point, they were not specific enough to be included into routine clinical practice. A few months ago, the results of the RUBY study were published, and this was a study looking again at uh, biomarkers to identify non-recovery following an episode of AKI. It was a multi-center observation study involving 364 patients who underwent serial measurement of urine and serum biomarkers. And the team identified urinary chemokine CCL14 as a biomarker indicating persistent acute kidney injury, as shown here on the left. 
the value of this biomarker also correlated with the um, measurement. And the higher the biomarker in the urine, the higher the risk of either death or need for renal replacement therapy. So in summary, we have many biomarkers available, which allow us to optimize the management of acute kidney injury because they add granularity to the, uh, the patient and the patient's illness. They allow us to identify subphenotypes. They may shine light on the etiology of acute kidney injury and they help us identifying high-risk patients. This is summarized once more in this figure here where the numerous different trajectories following acute kidney injury are demonstrated. And at many levels, acute kidney injury may help giving us a clearer picture or predicting potential outcomes. Lastly, given the value of acute kidney injury biomarkers, it is uh, should be discussed whether these biomarkers should be included in a future definition for acute kidney injury. At present, we are using creatinine and urine output, but it is important to discuss whether biomarkers should be included in a future revised definition, as they clearly highlight, add granularity to the clinical picture and have high potential to improve management. So in conclusion, new biomarkers have contributed to an improved understanding of the pathogenesis. They've allowed us to get a clearer picture of the not only the pathogenesis, but also uh, the different types of acute kidney injury. And depending on the nature and origin of these biomarkers, they can be used for different uh, phases in the management from screening to diagnosis to prognostication. And clearly, they have high potential to improve the management of patients with acute kidney injury. So in my opinion, the future of acute kidney injury management is bright. Thank you.